On the first films, uh, I purposely avoided uh, very intense design cultures. So I kept the costumes very, very simple. And the costumes were designed not to draw attention to themselves. In the new film, uh, the costumes do draw attention to themselves. They have to because they're in a more sophisticated society. And to do that and keep it timeless is much more difficult. I think with respect to episode one, it became pretty clear immediately that these were costumes that we weren't going to be able to rent or hire from any place around the world. And the only way we're going to maintain the quality and have the look, the true look that we wanted, was to fabricate everything. At our busiest, we were using maybe 50, 60 people just in the costume department. I think we made um, well over a thousand costumes. In fact, we made everything really that's, that's seen everything hats, helmets, costumes. We had fabrics woven, printed, dyed. Everything that you could do to a piece of fabric, we have done to it. When I initially saw the designs, I was like, wow, I have to do this, because you could see how much, there's so much more that goes into it than just a regular movie. You feel that the movie's really a creation. It's a lot of artists coming together and working on it. It's not just, you know, a script and a couple of actors. <laughs> It was extraordinary to stand in front of the mirror with all my wardrobe on and stuff. Because I was Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, and it was, quite a, it was quite a moment for a young man. You still have much to learn, my young apprentice. The look of the costumes, like, taps into all these various cultures that we all subliminally recognize. The designs are a little more outlandish, uh, especially for the Queen. We looked all over, I mean, Mongolia and Tibet and just everywhere to find inspiration for our costumes. This is where we're going to get killed the most, or I'm going to get killed. <laughs> <laughs> I have very scrupulously avoided fashion in the other movies. I, 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 made, I made the Princess Leia, you know, very, very simple, just mm. completely simple. No design, no fashion, no nothing. This time we're walking right into a fashion statement, <laughs> head on. When I first started in the film, we were going to have three costumes for the Queen. And um, as time went on, George decided that every time we saw the Queen, that she was going to have a different costume. We must do Somebody of that stature would automatically be changing her costumes to fit the occasion. She travels, she goes to the Senate, she has sort of official functions and non-official functions, and each one of those demands a different type of, uh, of costume. Um, Ian McKay did a lot of the drawing um, and various other people in the conceptual art department and sort of showed them to George at the art department meetings and, and then, you know, came back and said, yes, George likes this one, doesn't like that one. Some suggestions for some of those new costumes. Ooh! If you could make that line more... You basically take the this. screenplay and the written word, if you get to read it, or a verbal description from the director, if you don't, and uh, uh, imagine it. it. has a little loop on the side of her trousers for the gun belt to be held down there. The ski pan outfit. You know, it's one thing to be able to draw something on a piece of paper, and another thing to actually make it three-dimensional and work. Uh, but Trisha couldn't do that. She had to actually deal with it and make it work in the real world. I think you quite like the idea of being able to see through it. Yeah. I think uh, four inches on the center backs. So there was a lot of redesigning that had to go on. So this is red. And a lot of working with different types of fabrics. Really pretty intense. Different kinds of materials, uh, different kinds of jewelry, and make it all fit together. Four and a quarter uh, inches across. across. Uh -huh. So was that, was that marked the center? Or? Yeah. yeah. I went to London and, and discovered what a real costume designer does, which is take 20 different fabrics, go <gasps> and the next thing you know, there's, there they all are, and they're pinned up, and it's a sheet of black just like you drew, but it's, you know, 10 different pieces of material. This is the part of the Queen Travel One costume. It's completely handmade, so you start with a sheet of um, almost clear, it's like a, a cellophane, you do your design on it, and when you finish that, you stick it in water, and the clear fabric disappears, leaving the lace. 
So this fabric took someone probably a month uh, to make, working at continually. It will be ratified by the Senate. I will not. We use quite a lot of antique pieces in various places, antique trimming and fabrics from various parts of the world. This, I think, probably was about 1910. Um, but it was quite difficult to tell just because it was a, a lace piece with sort of odd bits. Some of the motifs weren't complete, so we had some fantastic sort of embroiders here who managed to bead it all back and add in the beads to make it look like one complete piece. Tricia is very good at bringing in antique cloths, um, various kinds of weights of cloth that would move different ways when they were layered on top of each other, things that I hadn't had a lot of experience with, and so I learned a great deal from Tricia. This was quite a time-consuming fabric to create because all the stones were um, gathered sort of on a beach. We did have problems with this in Tunisia uh, because with the heat, the rubber sort of expanded slightly and we had stones popping out all over the place and spent quite a lot of time having to put them back in again. I thought that collar was meant to be slightly set back. That's quite flexible, isn't it? That was a smaller piece and then had another piece here, depending on how fat to go underneath. It's very easy in a movie to want to make everybody be the same because then you can just replicate a particular costume. We've done two versions of this armour in different types of quilting. To do individual costumes and do them in the thousands is a very, very difficult task. But I did want the military to have several different kinds of outfits, that the officers were different than the enlisted men, that the pilots were different than the troopers. I'm going to say you've got a belt. Yeah. You've got gloves. That thing on your head is perhaps a hat. Goggles and boots. Well, being in the costumes themselves and having the strange makeup and hair really made me feel different. You feel like a different person. When you feel like a different person, it's easier to act like a different person. It also changes your movement. If you've got a big thing on your head, you have to walk straighter. You can't slouch like an American teenager. You have to stand straight like a queen so that it doesn't knock you over. In the other films I've uh, been involved with, it's always been a very, very simple wardrobe. Uh, and this became a very complex, very designed wardrobe, a very fashionable wardrobe. I think people will be amazed by the costume. The images are so haunting and so beautiful. Uh, and I think it's something that they've never seen or witnessed before in a, a pre any previous Star Wars film. I just think that the gray costumes, I think Ewan looks fantastic in his. You look good in yours. Oh, like you look good fantastic. It's good for like the effect of the film, as long as it doesn't like give me brain damage or anything, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs>